read that one out loud. Okay. <laughs> Drum roll. Oh, this is log. This is the part that I'm feeling bashful about, but okay. My name's Associate Professor Tanya Laddie. I teach into first year biology, talking about biodiversity and evolution. Uh, I also teach entomology and applied entomology and a little bit into some of the plant protection units. So everything insect, pretty much. Tanya Laddie, that's me. I've never met her personally, but she she, <laughs> she made even pre-recorded online lessons so much fun, and I so looked forward to them every week. Oh! <laughs> it was obvious she put so much effort into every lesson <clears throat> and enjoyed what she was teaching. I'm not a fan of insects, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but took entomology just to watch more of her lectures and maybe even meet her. Haven't yet, but maybe one day. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I think especially with the recording lectures, you're never really sure if you're connecting with students because you get no feedback, you can't see them. So it's, it's lovely to hear that they enjoyed them. And I hope I meet you too, <laughs> whoever you are. <laughs> I'm Dr. Mark DeVitas. I teach in art history at the University of Sydney. I teach in our undergraduate program, uh, teaching our students everything from uh, histories and theories of oil paintings through to fashion and furniture design and interiors and you know a whole bunch of other things. I also teach into our postgraduate program through the Master of Art Curating where we train our students to be leaders uh, in the galleries, libraries, archives and museum sector otherwise known as the glam sector. Uh, very glamorous. Uh, Dr. Mark Davidis, his first year art course was phenomenal and there are lots of exclamation points. I never felt more encouraged and supported by a lecturer. I changed my major two months in. Now I'm beginning to see a future in art history. Uh, well, I mean, this is what we're trying to achieve. So <laughs> it's wonderful to, to hear um, that a student was um, so engaged by what we teach in art history. Um, and I really love the last part of it, them saying that they see a future for themselves in art history, which is what we're trying to do right from the beginning of our first year program, to help them understand that art history connects with a sector, uh, galleries and museums, and that there are lots of opportunities out there for students who want to go and work in that sector. Uh, Tim Allender, and I'm um, in the Faculty of Arts, the School of Education and Social Work, and um, I teach history curriculum and also, um, my specialty is history of education, which is mostly the colonial period in Britain, yes, um, but specialising on India. Yeah. Professor Timothy Allender has been a fantastic supervisor throughout my research degree, an absolute legend as far as I'm concerned. Um, he helped me ignite a passion for the history of education and guided me selfishly through my course. I couldn't be more grateful for his support and friendship. Well, that's really nice. I mean, I like the friendship part because I think it's important to be able to connect with people um, on that level. Um, I think learning is so much easier that way. And uh, uh, I'm very flattered that someone would write in those terms for me. My name's Meg Brasher. I'm the John Rowe Lecturer in Australian Literature uh, in the Discipline of English. Meg Brayshaw teaching literary history. She's an amazing lecturer. She organises our class so well and her teaching is really fun. As an international student, she helps us a lot and she encourages every student to understand. She creates a warm atmosphere in class and I can't believe, I can't explain how much she's been helpful for everyone in class. Makes this class more comfortable and less daunting. I hope she sees this heart emoji. <laughs> That's very sweet. I like the little heart at the end. I'm Hong Nguyen, I'm a lecturer in the School of Life and Environmental Sciences. I work a lot in the first year biology space and spend most of my time coordinating human biology, bio 1008 and 1908. Okay, Dr Hong Dao Nguyen, this was two years ago and again last year, but I first met her in my bio bridging course, then again in a few units I did, first namely human biology. She was so kind and so approachable that I made the courage to ask her if I could ask some questions about a career in research and doing a PhD. And she literally had a 1.5 hour Zoom call with me, answering all the questions I had and telling me her story about the ups and downs of the profession. Really went above and beyond and inspired me to pursue a PhD one day and go into teaching. A lot of teachers and unit coordinators do great work, but Dr Nguyen really went above and beyond to get to know her students a lot better and really is an inspiration for me to pursue my life goals. 
She's really the few that are under underappreciated. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm so flattered. Um, just for someone to to spend their time writing what I would say a pretty lengthy. Um, I don't know what you would call this, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm getting a little bit teary-eyed. <laughs> Look, I, I love talking with students and just seeing where they are in life and it, the, the courses I, I coordinate, um, they're, they're quite large in student numbers and so you never really know uh, if you are deeply connecting with students. Wherever we can, we do try and take some time and, and talk with students. Um, I find that really valuable and just really heartwarming. So thank you so much for for this feedback. Hey, words of wisdom to your students. <laughs> Keep doing what you love, I think. Like I said, I had no idea that you could make a career out of entomology when I was little. That wasn't even on my radar. And I just stayed in school doing the things I enjoyed. And now I have a job. So yeah, follow, follow your passions. I think sometimes you need to be able to accept failure and to go back and regroup and reconfigure. So that's more a description of my approach. It's, it's not offered though as wisdom. <laughs> I would say that you define your own success. Um, it's a bit difficult when you're navigating through your university experience right now where there is a lot of pressure to perform academically well. Just remind yourself of that. It's not always about marks and the amount of things you do. Um, so I hope that's helpful. I always say to my students that you don't have to be right all the time. And in the literature classroom especially, if you have an idea, feel free to say what you think. <laughs> uh, words of wisdom for students. For me, it's always about process. It's about the way that you do things. So be organized, uh, know what you have coming up, uh, be present. Uh, and that's a lot of it, I think, to be involved in things, to actually push yourself forward, to connect with those people that are around you and to make the most of your time at university because uh, undergraduate degrees go past very, very quickly. And that I often find myself wishing now that I could go back, but it doesn't happen. <laughs>